name is Pratik Shah. I am an assistant professor in D.Y. Patel School of Engineering. In the previous module, we had seen passive infrared sensor and LM35, that is a temperature sensor. In this module, we will be discussing about ultrasonic sensor that is used to measure the distance of any object. Along with that, we will be seeing a very important concept of PWM, pulse width modulator. Pulse width modulator is used in lot of places uh, like robotics controlling the speed of a motor and all the stuff and uh, ultrasonic sensor is used to measure distance as we have said earlier it is used for uh, applications where we want to measure a distance and work accordingly like reverse car parking system or in obstacle avoidance robot or some other cases okay so uh, we'll explore those things and then we can see the application part Let's start with ultrasonic sensor. In ultrasonic sensor, uh, okay, first let us see what is an ultrasonic sensor. Ultrasonic sensor is used to measure distances. Now, how does it work? It works on the principle of sonar or the principle that is used by bats and dolphins to measure the distance. Now, it has got two things. One is transmitter, another one is receiver. So, ultrasonic sensor does what? It transmits ultrasonic sound of 40 kilohertz and it transmits it and after that it waits for receiving those sounds back so the time required for that waves to proceed further and come back based on that we can calculate the distance of any object from it as you all know speed is nothing but distance upon time we know the value of speed that is 332 meter per second and we know the time we can calculate the time with this so with the help of speed and time we can calculate the distance this is the principle used by sonar and that is what is used in this ultrasonic sensor so this ultrasonic sensor has a transmitter part from where the ultrasonic signal or sound or waves are transmitted and a receiver part where those waves are received back so based on that we can calculate the distance now uh, for that we have got four pins as you can see here those four pins are vcc trigger eco and ground vcc trigger eco and ground VCC and ground are used for providing power supplies that is 5 volts which is provided uh, for this circuit to work and then we have got two pins that is trigger and eco. Now trigger and eco pins are used for a specific purpose when the trigger pin is given a pulse of 10 microseconds at that time it transmits or it starts or it initiates the process of transmitting ultrasonic signal and after that uh, when this receives the pulse, the receiver will receive those pulse back. At that time, the eco pulse will generate a, wave, uh, a pulse which is of the same proportion to the distance. So, VCC ground connected to the Arduino pins for, for power supply purposes and trigger and eco are the things due to which we will get the distance. So, if you want to just measure distance one once, what you have to do is you have to give a trigger pulse to, uh, oh, sorry, 10, milli uh, 10 microsecond pulse to the trigger pin and then at the eco pin you will receive this concept we will see by graphical presentation later on but uh, what i want to focus is that we have four pins and the importance of them so this is it now if you take a look at the back side you can see there is a lot of complex circuitry around here we have got three ic's then capacitors and all these stuff but uh, we need not take a, think about them at all because we just have to think of these four pins and the functionary that is required here okay so now we'll see the specification of it and then with the timing diagram we'll see how it works now uh, yes here you can see these are the parameters and the operating ranges of ultrasonic sensor the first parameter is working voltage it requires the 5 volts for working the current that is required is 50 milliamperes we need not uh, think about that much the working frequency is 40 kilohertz that means the ultrasonic sound that is transmitted uh, from this sensor is of 40 kilohertz then the maximum range and minimum range they have told us the minimum range is 2 centimeters that is from 2 centimeters to maximum range of 400 centimeters from 2 centimeters to 400 centimeters you can measure the distance so any object that is at a distance of 400 centimeters we can measure its distance accurately now the measuring angle is 15 degrees and the last part is the dimension of it so from this we can understand that anything that is from 2 centimeters to 400 centimeters that is 4 meters we can measure from this sensor now uh, 
Okay, now let us see how actually it works in the this slide uh, we will be having a timing diagram before that as you can see transmitter will transmit the waves and receiver will receive the waves and the distance should be at an angle or this object should be at an angle of 15 degrees then only the this thing is accurate now as you can see we have to provide a pulse of 10 microsecond to the trigger pin when we provide a 10 microsecond pulse to trigger pin the transmitter will start transmitting the waves the transmitter will send 8 bursts or 8 waves of ultrasonic signal and after transmitting the last or the 8th wave our echo pin will be high and it will be high till we receive the wave back now uh, with this timing diagram the concept will be more clear ok so when the trigger pin is given a 10 microsecond pulse at that time the transmitter starts sending 8 ultrasonic bursts and when the last burst is transmitted our echo will return and uh, e e echo will be high and it will be high unless and until we do not receive the uh, signal pack now as we have discussed earlier the range is 400 centimeters till 400 centimeters it will measure so it will wait till measuring 400 centimeters only after that it won't measure and it will echo pulse will get low automatically so the maximum distance or maximum time for which the echo pulse will be high is for 38 milliseconds so till 38 milliseconds you will get the high pulse if you get 38 milliseconds as an high that means there is no object in the range of 400 centimeters and it is a false reading so what we have to do is we have to monitor echo pulse we have to monitor the time duration for which echo pulse is high and based on that we can calculate the distance so uh, this is the illustration and the examples now we can start with the circuit diagram this is how the circuit will look like now here we just have got four connections vcc and ground are connected to the terminals of arduino and the sensor simultaneously then 12 number pin from arduino is connected to trigger pin of your ultrasonic sensor and 11 number pin is connected to echo pin so the circuit is quite simple vcc ground trigger and echo are connected to pin number 12 and 11 of arduino respectively so now we'll build the circuit and after that we will talk about the programming aspects of it For this experiment, we will be requiring ultrasonic sensor, then we require Arduino board, then we require breadboard, breadboard is used to mount ultrasonic sensor onto it, then we require the jumper wires, jumper wires are connect, used to connect Arduino and uh, the ultrasonic sensor and this USB cable, USB cable is used to connect Arduino with the PC. Now we will start with it first thing that we have to do is we have to connect this ultrasonic sensor onto the breadboard now this gets fitted easily because the slots and the distances are same and you have to just see the uh, this terminal that is vcc trigger eco and ground according to that we have to make the connections now first we'll make the connections uh, ground pin and vcc okay so vcc goes on to this terminal ground goes below that then we are left with echo and trigger so trigger pin goes to pin number 12 trigger goes to pin number 12 that 8 9 10 11 12 and echo pin goes to pin number 11 so this is the connection uh, quite simple vcc ground 12 11 connected to vcc ground and trigger and echo now final one thing that we have to do is we have to connect the arduino to the pc okay so this finishes our connection now we have to uh, talk about code and the expected output
Okay, now let's talk about the code and the expected output. The output of this experiment will be the distance in centimeters. So we will place an object or I will place my hand onto the in front of the this ultrasonic sensor and the distance will be displayed on the PC. Therefore, there is a serial communication from Arduino board to the PC, one thing. And second thing is that we have to control the trigger and echo pins from the Arduino board. So we have to uh, generate a 10 microsecond pulse from Arduino board and we have to give it to the trigger pin. Then after that we have to measure the echo pulse that is we have to measure the output of echo pulse for, uh, from start to end that is how much distance it is having. So we have to measure that thing also. So these all things can be completed. You might feel that we have to manage trigger, we have to manage echo, we have to do it continuously. But uh, that's where that's why we are learning Arduino, I tell you, because we don't have to bother about all these things. There is one instruction that does all the thing for you and directly will get the output in centimeters. That's how. Let's see. First thing here that you will see is hash include new ping dot h. What is that? That is we are including a library, a header file new ping dot h named because that has got few methods, few functions which do your work themselves and they will automatically give you the distance in centimeters. Now second thing is that we are creating a constructor new ping sonar. Okay, so sonar is a constructor that we are creating and, and in that we are sending few parameters. Those parameters are 12, 11 and 200. 12, 11 and 200. What does that mean? 12 and 11 is the two pins that are connected from Arduino to ultrasonic sensor and 200 is the maximum distance that we want to measure. So uh, the range of ultrasonic sensor is 400 centimeters okay but I don't want to measure 400 centimeters. I want to measure it up to 200 centimeters only. After 200 centimeters I am not interested in measuring. Therefore we are creating a constructor and we are sending three parameters 12, 11 and 200. After that starts our program. The initial function is void setup where uh, we are starting the serial communication. Then and in that also you can notice one thing serial dot begin instead of 9600 the baud rate is high that is 115200 that is because I am sending the data at the speed of 200 milliseconds which is fast therefore uh, I have increased the baud rate. Now inside void loop you can see there are three instructions only. First instruction is delay then second instruction is uh, I am using a method sonar dot ping underscore cm. Now this is possible because of the header file that we have used and the constructor that we have created. So sonar.ping underscore cm is the instruction that does the task of providing a trigger pulse and measuring the output of echo pulse and converting that into centimeters and giving you the value. So sonar.ping.cm one function that will give you the output in centimeters and you can store it in a variable. So int a is equals to sonar.ping underscore cm. A is a variable, it is an integer. So in that the value will be stored. After that you want to print that value we are using serial dot print ln into bracket a. So the code is quite simple only 10 lines or less than 12 li 10 lines maybe just because of using new ping header file and the constructor constructors the programming and the all this stuff is getting easier. So Arduino is powerful because it has got lot of header files and uh, directories and functions due to which the programming is simple. We get all the things ready made and that is quite simpler and we did not uh, all the times uh, manage the trigger pin, the echo pin and we have to do the calculation. Nothing is required in here. Now let's uh, write this code onto Arduino IDE, dump it and see how the result is. Let's upload the code and see what's the output of it. Uh, first thing, we'll compile the code. The same code is written over here. Let's compile it, check whether it's correct or it's having any error. Yes, there are some errors. Now, these errors are because of this hash include new ping dot h. Why? Because we are including a header file and that is not available in this thing. So, we have to add that header file. So we have to click on sketch and then include library. So now uh, for this we have to download a new ping dot h library. If you google it you will get that thing. So we will get a zip file of that. We have to add that zip file. 
so after pressing it it will ask for the location i have stored it onto the desktop here it is new ping version 1.7 we have to add it so when you open this thing this header file gets added onto the arduino boot so now we can easily compile it and it will not generate any error because uh, the header file is added okay so it's compiling and okay done so now you can see that sketch is compiled and there are no no errors okay that is because we have added the library and now it can detect the new ping and all the constructors and methods associated with it now we'll upload the code onto the board and we'll see the output okay the code is uploaded oh okay okay, okay. there is a loose connection once again i'll upload it now it's getting uploaded and i don't think it will have any problem yes it's uploaded successfully and uh, we'll click on serial monitor and here we'll see the distance before that we have to change the baud rate that is 11520 yes now you can see the distance that is 128 129 and all uh, if i place my hand in here you will see 8 centimeters 9 centimeters so my hand is at a distance of 9 centimeters from it now it is at 7 centimeters if i increase my distance of my hand slowly it will increase 10 11 12 14 15 16 18 23 21 etc etc now if i bring it closer it gives me 5 5 6 4 so this is in centimeters so if you want to measure the correctness you can take a scale and uh, you can place your hand and based on that you can measure these values so i have checked it a lot of times and it is uh, performing absolutely fine okay so uh, that's it now here also we are not used buzzers we are not used leds to show the output what you can do is you can use buzzers and leds for uh, this thing also uh, now you can connect pin number 12 13 14 etc to a buzzer or an led and you can write a code like that if some object comes 5 centimeters or before 5 centimeters start the buzzer or start the led this kind of circuit is used or can be used in your car parking system or uh, at the back of the car or at the front of the car as well so whenever you are taking uh, your car in a reverse gear or you want to park it or you want to do something there will be an indicator or there will be a sensor that will be measuring the distance and it can give you alert in the form of a buzzer sound or an led or whatever you want to do so you can make this circuit in less than i guess six seven hundred rupees and you can uh, attach it or use it in your car and that will serve the purpose or various other things also you can do along with this after that very interesting experiment with ultrasonic sensor now we'll start with an important concept that is pwm pulse width modulator now pwm is very important and used for controlling the speed of motors now uh, we'll talk about dc motors we have not experimented with it in the next modules we'll be experimenting with it but uh, i'll give you a brief idea about it dc motor has got two pins if you provide five volts and ground to it it will start rotating clockwise if you provide ground and plus 5 volts in the opposite polarity it will rotate anti-clockwise so in short you provide supply it will rotate now dc motors come with various specifications such as voltage rating and along with that they come with rpm that is rotations per minute so if you take a, a dc motor and it has got 100 rpm that means in one second it will rotate 100 times if you provide the sufficient voltage for it so suppose i buy a 5 volts 100 rpm motor and if i provide 5 volts to it it will rotate 100 times in a second suppose i want to control the speed of the motor then how can i do it suppose i want to rotate it for just 50 times in a second so how can i do it if i apply 2.5 volts that is half the capacity of it will it do no the answer is no it cannot do that because it is working only at 5 volts and will rotate for 100 times only so in this kind of situations the use of pwm is must and that is the only solution that we have 
So as we know that we have got two types of single signals, one is digital, one is analog. Digital means what? 5 volts, 0 volts, done. Analog means what? From 0 volts to 5 volts, you can generate various in steps like 0 0.1 volt, 0 0.2 volt, etc, etc. So for the motor case, we cannot use analog port and give 2.5 volts to it and expect that motor will rotate. We cannot do that. So we need to provide 5 volts to it and we want it to rotate at 50 RPM. So for doing that, we use the concept of PWM. PWM is a technique for getting analog result with digital means. So what we'll do is we'll connect our digital pins to the motor, but we'll do a trick. What we'll do is suppose I'm using the motor for 10 seconds. So in that 10 seconds, first second, I will give five volts in the second second. I'll keep it low. Then after that, I'll give it on for one second, then low. So what I'm doing is I'm generating a square wave of 50% duty cycle. That is for half the time it is on, half the time it is low, on, off, on, off, on, off. So the motor will be on, then it will be off, on and off. But the speed of switching of the volt voltage is very high and motor cannot cope up with that. So actually what happens, the speed of motor is reduced to 50 RPM. It won't stop because we are switching the digital signals at a very high speed. Okay. So for 10 microseconds, I'll give 5 volts output. For next 10 microseconds, it will be off. For the subsequent 10 microseconds, it will be on, off, on, off, on, off. So in microseconds, I'm switching on and off the digital pins. And that is given to the motor. And motor cannot switch so quickly. So it, if when you give 0 volts, motor will not be off. It will be rotating only, but the speed is reduced. So after some time, you will get a fixed RPM of 50. Now we'll explore. This was an application and the uh, uh, example of PWM. Now we'll see the theoretical definitions and what are the waveforms related to it. In pulse speed modulation, what we're doing is we are generating a square wave from the digital pins of the Arduino and the duty cycle that is the amount of time for which it will be on and off can be varied creating the effective or efficient analog values. Now uh, let's take a look at these waveforms. Now the first waveform is of 0% duty cycle. That means we are not switching on the digital pin at all. So we are not getting any voltage so it is equivalent to 0 volts. Then second one is 25% duty cycle. That means if you are switching the digital pin for one microsecond, then it will be off for the next three microseconds. So it will be on for just one fourth, that is 25% of the times. That means it is having a duty cycle of 25%. Now the next or the third wave is of 50% duty cycle in which the on time is 50% and the off time is 50%. So effectively you are giving 50% of the voltage. That is, if you are having 5 volts as the maximum voltage, you are giving 2.5 volts. Then the fourth one is of 75% duty cycle. For that, uh, we have got 3 4 times the digital pin is on. And the last one is 100% duty cycle. So these are the few things you can have 10%, 30%, etc. according to your requirement and the speed that you require. Now the question that would come is, how can I generate this kind of thing from my Arduino. Do I have to use the delay function? That means I have to write digital write 12 high and then I have to write a delay of some milliseconds, then I have to switch it low, then I have to write a delay of few seconds and that is to be continuously done. So that is the traditional way. But instead of that, we have got a shortcut. We can use analog write. Yes, yes, analog write function that was used for producing analog results from analog ports. We can use analog write instruction and in the bracket of it, we can specify the value. Now, uh, we have got a PWM inbuilt in Arduino port and uh, it is available. If you take a look at the digital pins, it is available at pin number 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11. Uh, if you take a closer look, you will see that there are dash or a curly sign view kind of thing that is available after pin number 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11. This signifies that these pins can be used as PWM pins. That means with the help of these pins, we can generate PWM signal and to generate that signal, we need not use delays and all. We can use our analog write instructions. So if I write analog write 
and then I can write uh, suppose 9 analog write 9 comma 127 that means I am taking or uh, producing an PWM from analog port uh, sorry digital port pin number 9 and 127 specifies 50 percent duty cycle. Now how does 127 specify 50 percent duty cycle that is because we have got an 8 bit PWM. 8 bit PWM means what 2 raised to power 8 that is 256. So we have got 256 values. So if you write uh, analog write 127 that means 50 percent of it. If you write analog write 64 that means 25 percent. Analog write 191 that is 75 percent. So accordingly 100 percent is broken into 255 various parts. So now uh, we can take a look at the programming and we can uh, think about what all things can be done. So before that uh, we will explain about how to build a circuit and what is the expected output. Let's build a circuit and see what the expected output will be. Now uh, we are building this circuit so that we get a PWM signal. Uh, there is not much to build in this circuit because we just are placing this LED on the pin number 9 of our Arduino board and we will be generating a PWM signal and the output will be seen here. Uh, we could have used a motor and we could have controlled the speed of it but uh, still motor is not explored so we will not go into that details. Uh, we will see the output with LED only. So first we will connect anode of this LED to pin number 9 and cathode is connected to ground. So I will use the shortcut instead of using a breadboard I will directly connect it. So this is 8 and this is 9 then 10, 11, 12, 13 and ground. Yes, so this is it. Only this part is the connection, not much to do. Then we have to connect Arduino to PC. Yes, so this is how we can connect it. Now let us talk about the output and the expected things. Uh, I have written a code which will do what? It will vary the duty cycle of PWM. In short, I am generating a PWM signal from pin number 9. Instead of generating a 50 percent duty cycle or 75 percent duty cycle, if I keep a fixed duty cycle, there won't be much change in the LED. LED will glow only and you won't be able to see the variation in the intensity also. Therefore, I have written program in which the intensity of uh, the PWM is changed that means the duty cycle of PWM is changed so that from 2 percent duty cycle to 100 percent duty cycle we are going. So first it will be uh, on for 2 percent duty cycle then 4 then 6, 8 similarly. So we will be having the things. So it will be increasing in duty cycle so the intensity is increasing. Later on we are reversing the cycle so intensity is coming down, 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 down and then once again up. So this is done so that you can see the output actually on the LED. Now for this I am using analog write signal as discussed earlier analog write 9 comma the 8 bit PWM value that you can use so that you can create a duty cycle. Now we are using 8 bit PWM therefore the possible levels are 256 that is 0 to 255. So if we start with 0 that is 0 percent duty cycle and 255 is 100 percent duty cycle 127 is 50 percent duty cycle. So we are using a step of 5. So first analog write 9 comma 5, analog write 9 comma 10, analog write 9 comma 15. In this way with the step of 5 from 0 to 255 we are going. So intensity will be increasing. Then from 255 once again we are coming to 0 and then going up and down. So this is what we are doing and in between changing of PWM duty cycle the delay of 30 second is given. Now we will explore the code and uh, we will implement it on the ID. Okay, now let us start with the coding part. This is the code, quite simple, less than 15 lights. Now uh, you might see that I have declared two variables prior to void setup and void loop. These things are called as global variables. Now these two variables are brightness and fade amount and both are integers. Brightness is uh, the value that we are going to call along with the analog write signal. So that is to be varied from 0 to 255 and the step at which we are going to vary is the fade amount that is 
5 ok so these are the two things now it's our role to vary the brightness depending upon the fade amount now in void setup we have just one thing that is we have to initialize pin number 9 as an output that's it in void loop we have to write the logic behind it now what is our logic our logic is to produce a pwm signal from pin number 9 and the value the pwm value that we have to give is to be 0 from 0 to 255 so initially i am writing what analog write 9 comma brightness the value of brightness is 0 so we are providing 0 percent duty cycle then the next instruction is brightness is equals to brightness plus fade amount so here the brightness is going to be increased by a value of phi that is brightness is equals to 0 plus phi so now the brightness will be phi then there is an if condition here now we will go inside the if condition only when the value of brightness is equals to 0 or 255 now in this case our brightness is set to phi so we will not go now then there is a delay of 30 milliseconds that's it then this loop is terminated so once again we come into loop here we are using analog write 9 comma brightness now that is analog write 9 comma 5 so that is 2 percent duty cycle approximately then we are increasing the value of brightness by 5 so it will be 10 then we will not go inside the if condition because it is not satisfying the condition so gradually we will note that 0 5 10 15 20 these are the values that are given to the pwm with the help of analog write 9 now uh, this is what will happen that is that means gradually the duty cycle is increased now if we take a look at this if condition we will go inside this if condition only when the brightness value is 0 or 255 why is that done because initially we are increasing the duty cycle we are increasing the value of brightness but uh, when it will reach the value of 255 there is no point in making it 300 or 305 because that is uh, sorry 260 or that because it is of no use so we have to take the process in the reverse cycle therefore inside if condition i have written fade amount is equals to minus fade amount that means instead of adding phi we are subtracting phi so it will become 250 245 240 and slow so it will increase decrease increase decrease and the same process is repeated now we will write the code into arduino ide dump the code and we will check the output I have written the code already into the Arduino IDE. Now we will compile it, check whether it is correct and we will upload it and see the functionality. Okay, so I am compiling the code and I do not think there should be any errors. Okay, it is taking time for compilation, it is compiling it. okay so it's done compiling now we'll upload it uh, click the upload button now we are uploading the code onto the arduino board okay so it's done uploading now we can see the output okay so the intensity has decreased once again it's increasing so you can see that a uh, lot of variation in intensity cannot be observed i feel but switching on and off you can see so what is happening is duty cycle is increasing therefore the it is getting brighter and then it's going down and once again increasing hope you like the video if you have any queries or doubts you can find us on facebook by the name million lights or even on twitter for more details and interesting courses you can visit our website www.millionlights.org thank you